In our last video, I showed you how I started installing the wall paneling in our forward cabin and everything was going well, despite the matter being a bit tedious and repetitive, but then this new boat came along and we all got distracted. And so today, I want to continue with this build and see how far we get this time, but I won't go through all the details, as for the most part, it's just a repetition of what we've seen in the last video. Instead, we're gonna move on right away to putting panels on the ceiling. But before we do that, let me give you some updates on my other boats. You remember my little GDR power boat, the so-called Ibis 2. This has been my daily driver for the past year. I use it a lot, for example, to haul new materials to the big boats. But lately, the motor has been causing issues. So I got a new engine, slightly bigger than the previous one. We had to extend my little crane to install it more easily on the boat. And now, this boat is even more fun to drive. That one new boat I got recently, the one with three keels, we're starting to refit it. Now the principle of this boat is to buy as little new as possible. So far we started building the interior by putting in a new floor and refurbished seats. And I got a really cool engine for it. Now on the big boat, I haven't really done that much since the last big update but I just recently continued welding the structure for the cabin. And once the steel structure is complete, I'm gonna use so-called sandwich panels for the walls and trapezoidal sheets for the roof. And I also found the main purpose for this boat. Now to see about these updates in more detail, you're gonna have to wait for upcoming videos. For now, let's get back to the kitchen. To cover the ceiling, I chose some plastic tongue and groove plates. These have many advantages over wood. For one, they are super lightweight. They are already all white, so I don't have to add another step of painting them. And they are absolutely water resistant, which is quite necessary for the ceiling of our boat, because during the winter times, the ceiling would often freeze up completely at night and then turn the boat into a dripstone cave every morning as soon as the temperatures would rise above freezing level. All right, now let's get started with the first board. I make some markings for where to cut, then we use the jigsaw with a metal saw blade. Once the board is cut, we need two people to put them in place, and to attach them to the ceiling, I would use self-drilling metal screws, which I would drill directly into the steel frame in order to not reduce the ceiling height too much. With the first board attached, we have proven that our method works and we can now confidently prepare the next ceiling boards. By the way, cutting these boards on a boat may not seem like the best idea as it does create quite a lot of microplastic, but the barge is so big that we can position ourselves a few meters away from the water and then we immediately suck up all the plastic after each cut so that nothing can get into the water. Alright, here we are putting in place the next two boards. For the next set of boards, we will attempt to cut them in one go by putting them together on the outside, then tracing the slope that the ceiling is forming in this area. When cutting the boards, we have to be very careful not to get confused about the direction they will go in later on. From measuring on the ceiling to cutting the boards on the floor, it can become quite confusing and easy to make mistakes. But two heads is better than one, so we managed to figure it out. Working with these plastic ceiling panels is a bit different than with the wooden wall panels, so it took me a few attempts to get this area on the ceiling right. In this segment, you can see my first attempt, where the angle of the side wall didn't turn out very good, but since the walls aren't finished yet either, I decided to come back to this later on. And so in this way, I can protect my walls and my ceiling. If I want to protect my computer, I use NordVPN. VPN stands for Virtual Private Network, a service that allows you to hide your IP address and make it appear as coming from anywhere in the world you so choose. I personally use it to log into some government website from my home country, which is not Germany, 
Some of these websites can only be accessed from within the country and so NordVPN allows me to comply with my obligations as a citizen. But NordVPN is more than just a VPN with a brand new feature called Threat Protection. This will guard your device against malicious websites, malware, trackers and intrusive ads. Let's take for example malware protection. Threat protection automatically scans every file you download. If a file turns out to be infected, it gets deleted immediately before it can cause damage on your computer. Now if you want to surf the internet securely from now on and benefit from NordVPN's 30-day money-back guarantee, then check the link in the description or go to nordvpn.com forward slash firstboat. Now continuing on the other side, there is the large skylight. So what we'll do is to open the hatch, then we put in place all the ceiling panels at first. I support the ceiling panels temporarily with a telescopic broom pole. Now looked at from the outside, I can simply trace the outline of the hatch with a pencil. Next I take everything off again. I cut out the space for the hatch. Put it all back and voila! Now we can attach the remaining of the ceiling panels. We cover up that smaller hatch. I make a little template to get the angle of that slope along the wall. Then once again I trace the outline of the hatch from the outside. I take it off cut it out and put it back in place. And with that, the ceiling is pretty much finished. But before showing you the end result, I quickly want to show you how I finish the area surrounding the door. Here we first had to finish building the framing before we could put in the wall panels. Then we had to finish covering up the left side of the door frame For the doorstep, I used an old stair profile. I refurbished it just a little in order to keep the original patina. To get it to fit, I had to first round off the corner of the doorstep. At this point, I'm attaching the wall panel to the door frame and eventually screw the door panel down. To cover the side edges, I made these aluminum profiles I tried my best to make it look as flush as possible. And just like that, we got a brand new door frame. Now to finish the rest of the wall panels, as mentioned before, I'm not gonna go into too much detail. Instead, I'm just gonna point out a few interesting things along the way. From here on out, I did all the cutouts for the corners of the windows with cardboard templates. For the forward two windows, I had to cut very small pieces of wood and the work resembled more to making a puzzle. Now for the single window on the right side, very quickly, I stole the template from the opposite side I drew most of the lines by hand, as by now, I was fairly comfortable with this task. The easiest way is to just press the cardboard over the edges and then simply cut out this kind of stencil. One last little template here at the bottom. And there we have it. Now is also a good time to finish the ceiling panels in this corner. At the third try, I finally got it to fit perfectly. Now I can put in place the painted wall panels.
And so now, feast your eyes on my brand new wall panels and ceiling. Despite a lot of elements still missing, the kitchen immediately looks much more inviting. I'm really happy with how the painted boards turned out. The wood grain still shows beautifully underneath the paint. I'm totally fine with the angular window frames for the sake of simplicity. Now I wouldn't have expected in my wildest dreams that the ceiling would turn out so nicely. The glossy finish takes away some of the oppressive character of the low ceiling. Even the cutouts for the hatches turned out almost perfect. Through some miracle, we managed to get such a tight fit that the use of corner strips seems almost unnecessary. What's still left to do is to add corner strips wherever necessary, fix the electronics, add another AC socket here, and of course the floor still requires a lot of work. But for me, I have hit that point again where I'm just a little bored and I'm sensing that some of you might feel the same. So for the sake of keeping this video entertaining, I will move on to something else. Recently, I traveled half around the globe to visit my wife in her home country of Formosa. Now this isn't a travel channel and I didn't spend the whole of my time there shooting stuff for my YouTube channel, but I find it such a precious and beautiful place that I can't help but tell the world a little something about my time there. So for the rest of this video, I'm just gonna ramble on a bit about my time on the beautiful island of Formosa. And don't worry, there will be some boats involved. If you never heard of Formosa, it's because I'm using the old name that Portuguese seafarers gave it in the 17th century. Though I might not have the best footage to underline the following statement, but Formosa is a country of extreme beauty and astonishing cultural heritage. Very entertaining, indeed. Largely isolated from the rest of the world, at the same time an open and free country, a lot of things are done very differently here and may appear strange to somebody from the Western world like myself. One of the most striking and funniest examples of how the Formosians do things in their very own unique way is how they do trash collecting. The trash trucks play a certain song, often a different one, in different parts of the country, which lets the people know that the trash truck is approaching and they have about a one minute time frame to go down into the street and throw the trash in the back of the truck, knowing that if they miss it, they're gonna have to take the trash back home and store it until the next time the trash truck comes around. When I first saw this, I just couldn't believe that in the country where they produce over 90% of the world's most advanced computer chips, this is the best solution they came up with. The former seas are a spiritual bunch, divine depictions and spiritual artifacts are omnipresent in the public and private life. And what would be considered superstition here in the West is simply part of daily life and culture for the bulk of the Formosan population. Thanks to its subtropical climate, plants are growing rampant in Formosa. At some point in history, the entire island was covered in a dense forest. And even here in civilization, nature finds the smallest gap to settle in. Sometimes the jungle swallows up a house, and here's a house in the grabs of another type of jungle. Architecturally, I find Formosa very interesting. On the one hand, you have the hyper-modern, metropolitan type of buildings, with some of the older structures often resembling to a dystopian kind of film set. On the other hand, we find lots of traditional, much more humble type of buildings, Especially in the rural areas, function presides over form. 
Alright now, let us finally get to the boats. I visited a couple of harbors in the northeastern part of Formosa, and aside from a few recreational boats and a few yachts, in the ports I visited there were basically two types of fishing vessels. And before we continue, please note that I know nothing about fishing boats or fishing in general. So please take the following with a large grain of salt. For one, we have these smaller fishing trawlers. I assume these are used for squid fishing based on the chain of lights they have surrounding the upper deck. What struck me most is that these boats seem to be made purely out of wood and glass fiber. While there are some metal fittings all around the hull, they don't seem to play any role in the integral strength of the boat. The trawlers are usually beautifully decorated, clearly a display of a certain pride by the owners and the crew. And I can also imagine that in this way they are seeking fortune from the gods as the seas surrounding Formosa can be quite treacherous. The other type of fishing vessels I saw is what I would call these kind of tube boats. There is no actual hull, it's simply a wooden frame placed on a set of these long and closed tubes. Making them extremely simple, fast and cheap to manufacture and I would assume that they're also really easy to maintain. I saw one on the hard stand so that gave me a chance to have a closer look. It appears that this one is being refurbished. The one thing I immediately noticed is the size of the rudder and propeller. Coupled with a large truck engine, these things must be really fast out in the open seas. Interestingly, the tubes are only tied to the wooden frame with some kind of plastic cable. All in all, a very pragmatic style of boat building. And that concludes our little trip to Formosa. And we're also at the end of today's video. As always, I thank you very much for watching till the end. And I will see you in the next video.